All right, guys, it is competition day. This is being put on by Gold Squadron Podcast. They have assigned three painters, a random ship, and theme. Once I received it, I had two weeks to come up with a plan, execute it, and then send the ship back. The winner of this episode of Gold Squadron Paint Wars is... If you guys haven't heard of Gold Squadron Podcast, go ahead and go over to their YouTube page, check them out. And there it is. They've already got a couple episodes of this Paint Wars live. There we go. Got the gunship. This is the first gunship I've painted. This is going to be a lot of fun to play around with. In order to achieve something that looks sea creature-esque, I decided to go with a two-tone look. I went dark on the top, light on the bottom. Similar to mimicking like a shark or something like that that you'd see with the light belly. Then over top of that, I started laying down my greens. I went with a really deep olive at first. And then I started brightening it up and creating a couple fades, focusing on the top down and the front to the back. In order to brighten this up, I'm using golden yellow. Then I wanted to add some detail to the underside, so I decided to make a masking tape stencil. This is honestly a pretty simple technique to do. You just grab your masking tape, put it face to face, sticking to itself, make your design, and then cut it out. And then when you open it back up, you'll be left with two matching stencils. Given that this was a prompt for mythical creatures of the sea, I decided to go with something a little bit prehistoric, a little old. Something that might have been around for, you know, a couple hundred years just hanging out waiting to be discovered. In order to achieve that effect, I used an orange to make a random spotted pattern that would look similar to scales across the back of this thing. Kind of like it's an armored section. After I had those down, I noticed that my stencils had bled a little bit. So what I did is I came in with a cleaner and a little bit of thinner and just kind of tidied up those edges where that paint had spilled out under the mask. After that, I jumped right back over to my scales. I started adding in a little bit of that golden yellow because I had already used it in the green, so I figured it would be nice to tie that into the orange as well. What I'm trying to do here is create a three-dimensional look. And in order to enhance that three-dimensional look, I'm gonna put some black lining on the bottom side of the scales, basically creating a drop shadow. Then to really exaggerate the scale being three-dimensional, I came in with white and did that just on a thin line on the top of the scale, really giving it a defined high point. It is really fun to look at these things side by side. So you can see here the left side is pretty plain and then the right is detailed out. It's just nice to see the contrast in what you're doing. Sometimes you get lost along the way and it doesn't look like you're doing much. That and it can really help you guys see it and what the difference actually is between all these different layers. And here's what I was searching for when I came up with my scheme. I saw a lot of these greens, these oranges. Usually you associate blues and grays with water more, but I thought it was much more mythological to go with the green look. And what I ended up with was trying to get a similar approach to this guy right here with these scales. After working on the skin of the ship, it was time to come back in and pick the cockpit color. And what I did for this was go with purple. The reason I did that is to try and hit like a triadic style theme, making this purple just really pop in the final application against the green. After that, it was time to come in with some metallics. I decided to do some of the engine bay in here, the exhaust ports in the back, some of the guns, stuff like that, just detailing out little bits. I didn't want the silver to take over since it was supposed to be a creature but it definitely did need to be there to pop and contrast against the rest of the ship. From there I went over and did some black lining. I started out with acrylics going around the cockpit because I wanted something a little bit more controllable. And then for the rest of the ship, I came in and did a oil wash. You can see originally I started out trying to do a pin wash, but even with a gloss coat down, I wasn't getting the capillary action to pull the paint where I wanted it to. So after that failed, I just kind of slopped it all over. Then after I let it cure up a little bit, probably about 30 minutes, I came back in with a Q-tip and a little bit of white spirits just to kind of get that off the raised surfaces and try and leave some of it in the recesses. I figured the next best place to go would be to do highlights. We've already got the dark contrast in the recesses, now we're going to get the brights on the high points and the sharp edges. 
Once again, here's the detailed out right side versus the left side. One of the final touches I wanted to do was to put on a ball and socket magnet. It just makes the ships much more dynamic when you're playing with them on a tabletop. You know, you can turn them, bank them, get some nice climbs, dives. That way, even if you lose, at least you lost in style. So after attaching the socket to the bottom, I went ahead and put the ball magnet on, tested it out, and it was pretty solid. Spoiler ahead, spoiler ahead. If you're gonna watch the episode, click off now. The winner of this episode of come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Noah Wilson. Hmm. Okay. Well, no matter how this thing ended up, it was a lot of fun to paint the ship, and it was fun to be a part of. If you do end up going and watching it, take a look at the comments and let me know if you think the crowd favorite one. Thanks for hanging out with me. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Go paint something. See ya.